Welcome back, this is Fire675 with another Firefall Battle Frame Guide. Today we're going to cover the Raptor. The Raptor is a Tier 2 Recon Frame. Uh, it's the brother of the Nighthawk Frame, which I've covered previously. As you can tell uh, by all the Recon Frames, they're all very, uh, very lightweight, very trimmed down, not a whole lot of uh, extra armor plating uh, bulking up the frame. Um, as you can tell, uh, compared to the Nighthawk, the, uh, the generator pack, uh, your jet pack on the back there, it's got a few uh, extra little uh, fins, um, makes it a little sharper. Um, and you can, the other uh, interesting, unique thing about this is the uh, the blades sticking out the uh, beyond the elbow there on both sides. Um, those are cosmetic at this point. But later on, you can um, equip a perk that uh, actually utilizes those as weapons. Um, so as you can see, uh, you know they've got a single jetpack in the back. Uh, and when you do the air sprint, you get two more jetpacks. So going into the actual uh, nuts and bolts of this frame, uh, like all the other. Uh, recon frames um, you get basically a long-range weapon um, the unique long-range weapon uh, for the Raptor is called the charge rifle uh, as you can tell by the description here charge rifle builds up energy and then uh, unleashes it when you shoot the more energy you have built up the more damage it does um, a small energy burst deals damage to nearby enemies when a targets killed pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you look at the rifle itself, uh, right above the clip there's a uh, circular glowing uh, area. That's basically the reactor of your charge rifle. Um, that'll become more important uh, when we start talking about some of the perks. Um, now if you're in third person, I usually play most of my classes in third person. Um, you gain a benefit from this class um, as you can see the charge status um, or the overcharge status of your rifle which you cannot see in first person uh, nor can you see it in scoped in but again I'll get to that soon um, at the bottom uh, underneath your reticle there you can see a, uh, a white um, dashed line gauge if you will after you fire the gauge starts refilling, um, and that's your uh, your charge gauge for your weapon. Obviously, when you discharge your weapon, it goes down to zero, and then it starts building back up. Now, when it's fully charged, you do maximum amount of damage, uh, which can be seen in your stats under damage per round. So, at full charge, I do a little over three k. Now, if you shoot without a full charge, I'll shoot off and then hit this guy. Oop. I only did a thousand damage. See, as you can see, without a full charge, you do less damage. 900. So, that uh, makes uh, an interesting versatility uh, to this weapon. Uh, so, you can either choose to use it as a rapid fire, semi automatic weapon, um, and just be ripping off shots you know as fast as you can it's fairly accurate even with the uh, even with a recoil or you can use it more like the intended sniper rifle and try to use it uh, try to aim up your shots and try to hit with as high power uh, of a shot as you can um, and you can zoom in with, with your mouse wheel just like the um, the Nighthawk can now, comparing this to the Nighthawk weapon, um, which is the sniper rifle, which is the bolt-action sniper rifle, which is the classic, if you will, uh, sniper weapon, um, the charge rifle um, is actually uh, effective at short to mid-range as well, uh, just due to the fact of the reticle. You can see here it's a, uh, you know, a three-winged reticle. Um, and it's got a very small spread uh, when firing from the hip. 
So you can fire this weapon accurately from the hip compared to the Nighthawk, which is, heaven knows where that round's going to go if you're shooting it from the hip. So being able to shoot this from the hip is is a, it's a huge advantage, especially if you're like myself and you prefer to play in third person. You can keep your spatial awareness and still be able to uh, put pretty consistent damage downrange. Um, one strange thing about this weapon, which I don't know if it's a design flaw or if it's intended, is you lose your weapon charge when you decide to either toggle in or out of aiming down the sights. Uh, so you can see you've got a full charge bar here. If I go to scope in, it goes down to zero and starts recharging. If I come out of scope, it loses charge and starts rebuilding again. Now that's annoying for me because uh, as I covered before in the Nighthawk, you, know, you can you can utilize quick scoping in this game, but it doesn't work for this game because if your your power shots leveled up and you go to quick scope, you're going to shoot for minimum damage. Um, compared to the Nighthawk, where you can quick scope and uh, there is no uh, damage modifier, you either hit or you don't. So that's a something that I wouldn't mind seeing changed um, being able to keep the uh, the charge through the toggle of uh, aiming or not uh, so that's basically uh, the charged rifle in a, in a nutshell the uh, the best way to upgrade this weapon uh, is to find um, rapid fire modules uh, which will decrease your, or increase your rate of fire, I should say, um, and other modules that will decrease your charge up time. Um, with a high enough charge up uh, time, you can, at level 40, get, get this charge up to a baseline of below half a second. Um, so basically, you're ripping off shots as quick as you can about that fast for full damage um, which gets even more powerful when we start talking about some of the abilities starting with the first ability um, this is power field power field is one of the uh, reasons why this frame is currently overpowered uh, as of this recording uh, early September 2014 um, power field will give you increased rate of fire um, and give you unlimited ammo while you have the buff. Um, basically it's a um, directional deploy so I'll aim where I want it on the ground to deploy it. It'll shoot out almost like a uh, explosive charge um, for the other recon suits and as soon as it lands it will deploy a bubble, if you will, uh, that anyone that walks into that zone will get the buff. The buff will show up as a uh, an icon on your back, almost as if you had an objective that you were carrying, or um, kind of like the icon that shows up when you're encumbered, when you have too many items in your inventory. So that buff will last, uh, well I've, right now I've got this modded so it lasts uh, seven seconds. Obviously, you can change the duration with different modules. Um, oh, sorry, excuse me. The uh, buff deploy lasts for seven seconds, and the buff duration, when you actually pick it up, lasts ten seconds. Um, and potency uh, will also, potency modules will increase your rate of fire. Uh, so those are the three basic stats you want to look for as far as upgrading uh, this uh, this ability. Now, cool down because you want to get this available as much as you can. Potency will increase your rate of fire um, and buff duration. So those are the three things. So I'll show you what it looks like um, and keep an eye on my my ammo clip down there. Right now I've got 23 uh, rounds in my clip. So I activate the ability. There's the buff. I pick up the buff.
So I shot one at the end there. So I was able to put all those shells down range. Um, and it cost me absolutely zero ammo. Now this is really nice um, for a couple of different applications. Um, obviously if you're dealing with a boss uh, unit that you're fighting against, that's really great. If you get in a nice perch spot, you can use that and just hammer away um, and it's not going to cost you any ammo. Um, get next if you're at a tornado or if you've got uh, another dreadnought next to you and he's locking down into uh, turret mode drop one of those on him stand next to him uh, then you both share the buff anyone that comes in that um, that buff zone gets the buff so it'll give him increased rate of fire which is awesome already uh, with the turret mode but he'll also expend no ammo while he's in uh, in that 10 seconds that he has the buff so it's a great way to uh, to act um, um, as a support role uh, even though you're a sniper. Um, so there's a lot of things that snipers do in this game that make them act uh, within a support role. Um, for instance, send beacons. It increases the damage that's done to a target uh, if you have the debuff on them. So in a way, um, if you're a World of Warcraft uh, player or ex-player, uh, recovering addict <laughs> like myself, uh, snipers not only are potent damage dealers, but they're, they also act almost like a shaman. They, they modify uh, your other teammates' um, abilities. Uh, so they're a force multiplier, if you will. So, Power Field by itself is it's a very, very strong ability. But I will show you soon what happens when we match it up with the HKM. The second unique ability, it's the Raptor, is Sin Scrambler. Uh, Sin Scrambler has fairly limited application to PvE. Uh, it's usable, um, but to, to get a lot out of it, um, you'd, you'd probably be better off slotting a different ability for PvE. Uh, what it does, um, basically whenever you have any unit in the game, whether it's a player or if it's a NPC, if you hit the F button by default, it uh, adds targets to Sin. Sin is your targeting network, your friend of foe uh, target. So by hitting F, I see that little red icon over his head. That means it's a creature. It's an enemy creature because it's red. And you can default these colors to whatever you want. Everything in this game is very customizable with the uh, the in-game UI. So my Sin tells me that's an enemy right now. Now, if you hit a target with Sin Scrambler, um, it will flip that icon. So that'll no longer appear to everybody else as um, a foe. It may appear to be on my team. So this enemy right here, which would target me, would add me to Sin, if you will, he sees me as an enemy. But he would also see this guy as an enemy if I hit him with a Sin Scrambler. So it's a way to get other uh, enemies to fight amongst each other. Uh, basically it confuses them um, so that it could be helpful if you had a boss mob, say in an instance, um, and you had a lot of smaller NPCs attacking. You could hit the, uh, the boss mob with a Sin Scrambler and now everything else is on your team temporarily as well trying to attack that the, the boss um, where this ability is actually more useful is likely in PvP now if you recall back when I did my uh, dragonfly guide if you haven't uh, here's a link to it um, all the healing abilities um, double as damage abilities for instance, if you had a teammate or a friendly player near you and you hit them with a um, healing wave or a healing ball, within the area of effect, if Sin recognizes that other target as a friend, then it applies the healing ability to that target. Say it'll heal him for 3k or 2k or whatever. 
Now, if there were enemies, uh, NPCs that Sin considered uh, a foe, it would do damage to that same uh, that those targets within that area. So this is helpful in PvP. Let's say I've got an enemy player down to half health, and I see uh, an, an enemy dragonfly coming close. So it would tell me that he's probably going to try to heal that that character. If I nail that damaged character with a Sin Scrambler, now that Dragonfly's ability is going to read that other character, not as a friend, but as a foe. So by trying to heal him, he will in fact be doing more damage and may actually kill him uh, for you. Uh, so not only can he not heal up his, uh, his friendly player, but he'd be doing more damage to him. So it's... Uh, it's a really interesting application for, for PvP for this ability. The third unique ability is uh, the Teleport Beacon. Uh, the Teleport Beacon's been around for a long, long time. Um, when they first put in the, uh, the Recons uh, in Beta, this was one of the early on abilities that they got. Basically, it's a, uh, a Teleport Grenade, which is not unique to this game. Yeah, other games have had them. Uh, even going back to um, Unreal Tournament, they, they had like a, a teleport launch pad, if you will, uh, where you shoot it out and then you double tap and you end up where you shot it. It's no different for this game. Um, basically, it's got a, uh, a deployable duration, so it's seven seconds. Uh, that's modifiable. So after you throw it, you have seven seconds to activate it a second time to warp to the uh, to the location of the grenade. Uh, recharge takes 45 seconds, um, and pretty self-explanatory. I'll just show you how it works here. This is helpful um, sometimes, like when you're trying to climb um, areas that your your boost jets just don't have enough to get you uh, to the next level. Uh, and Coral's not so bad, but when you get out the Devil's Tusk and other areas like that, you, you, you find that you're, you're just not going to have the boost to get up a hill. That's where abilities like um, uh, the Assaults, um, uh, the Inferno Dash for the Tiger Cat, and, uh, and, and boost um, abilities like that help out. When you're just not quite there, you can hit the ability and, and get to where you're going. Uh, the teleport grenade is, is much the same. So like you're trying to get up here and you're not gonna make it. Try to throw that grenade up there. Uh, I didn't quite make it up. But you know if you got the grenade over the edge, you know, even though you fell down, you can hit your grenade uh, ability again and you'll warp to where your beacon ended up. That was a poor toss by me. But you get the idea. Um, so even if you're trying to climb that hill, this is uh, down near Sunken Harbor. <laughs> that hill right there is a lot of quests on top of that hill that it sends you up to and that hill can be a pain in the butt to, to, to climb uh, if you've ever requested out here you understand so those are the three basic uh, abilities uh, power field, uh, sin scrambler and the teleport beacon uh, now we'll get to the, uh, the HKM uh, it's called overload Sometimes I say overlord, uh, but I'm gonna try to say overload every time here. So it's the the recon HKM. Um, it overloads the crystal reactor, which I pointed out on the guns right above your clip, causing the charge rifle to fire electrical beams, which chain to nearby enemy units on impact. Uh, during overload, the charge rifle charges twice as fast, and all Raptor abilities are empowered. So there's a lot going on here. Let's uh, let's start from the top. The, um, the the charge crystal, um, which I pointed out, when it's uh, when it's glowing, it means it is uh, it's empowered. Let's see if I can get a couple shots off here without screwing that guy up here. One, two, three. Okay, so now you can see my gun is glowing right around my hands. That that crystal is overpowered. 
you see that blue arc that spit out there? That's the overpowered, uh, or overloaded bonus you get with a charge rifle. Um, now the reason why I got that charged uh, status from three shots is because of a perk that I have. But I'm just, uh, I'll get into that soon, but I'm just trying to show you um, the ability of the, uh, the charge rifle here. If I can land a couple shots without dying, oh my goodness. Which is, makes this really helpful because you have very limited AoE uh, damage abilities with this class. So a little bit of AoE like that is helpful. Uh, you can help help you wipe out some of the smaller enemies at the same time. And that, um, that explosion, that small range AoE, will do 50% of your max charge uh, shot damage. So my max charge was 3k per round. That, uh, that charge ability will do about 1500. Yeah, 1511, straight on, 50%. And it doesn't matter how much charge you have on your, your shot when that lands. So I could do one, two, three, get a charge, and just shoot a fourth really quick, even though the, the bullet damage would be low, it'll still give me that full 1511 um, AoE damage off of that shot. Now, when this is active, uh, not only does it give you that overpowered uh, presence, um, it will also do chain damage to nearby enemies, increasing the AoE uh, damage of, of this ability during the uh, duration. Um, and your, your rifle, charge rifle will charge up twice as fast. So now, this is where the overpowered uh, OP-ness, if you will, <laughs> I said penis, the OP-ness of this um, frame comes in. Because you've got two abilities this one gives you unlimited ammo, so you don't have to worry about reloading. You can shoot super fast. Um, increases your rate of fire. And this ability gives you AoE damage uh, for every shot that lands, and you charge up twice as fast. So even if you don't have um, your charge rifle charge time to a small, small level, um, when this is active, my charge time will go from two seconds to one second. So even if I'm shooting every half a second, I'm still getting 50% damage or so out of every shot, plus the AoE damage, plus the uh, arcing electrical damage. So you can see where this is going and why a lot of people are uh, enjoying this frame uh, in its current uh, state, state right now, because you can do a ton of damage with this uh, with this frame. Okay, we're back. And I've got my uh, HKM all powered up now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my power field and then I'm going to click into my HKM. So that's going to give me uh, all those benefits uh, together here. So as you can see, you do a crazy amount of damage, um, even with, with uh, subpar equipped weapons, uh, modified weapons. Now if I had my charge time um, of this weapon uh, decreased to a good amount, I would have been doing even more damage, because um, it would have been closer to, to full damage, uh, with the, even though I was shooting uh, rapid fire like that. So I would have been getting almost max damage, as fast as I could shoot, plus AoE coverage, plus arcing damage in between mobs. And I used no ammo, so I would never have to reload during that, uh, that buff sequence. So that's why um, 
this frame right now is is quite OP. And as you can see, my uh, my primary my first ability is already back up again. Um, so if you can put uh, cooldown modules, um, definitely in your HKM, but also in your uh, your your first ability, your um, power field. Now, getting back to what I was talking about with the empowered abilities, uh, when your ultimate is is active, it says all your raptor abilities are empowered. Oh, getting chewed on by something here. So here's a good reason to, to use my uh, grenade. I will toss my grenade that way. I will run this way, looking at my timer. Three, two, one. I use it, and he's way the heck over there now. And I got a head start running away from him. And he may not even follow me. And you can do that to, uh, obviously, to uh, players uh, as well. Uh, I guess he didn't. I guess he didn't quite run. Now that's what it looks like when you've got the uh, sin scrambler on a target. They've got that kind of modeled. Uh, red which is good because if they're red that means you can attack them if they weren't red you wouldn't be able to uh, do damage to them but it shows that uh, other characters also will see them as red so that's good um So like I was saying, the uh, when your ultimate's active, all your other abilities um, are empowered. Now we saw that the charge rifle was empowered because it was doing the AOE splash damage, the, the blue um, domes for your splash damage on every shot. So, um, so your charge rifle was empowered. And if you read the descriptions here, uh, everything has an, emp an empowered effect. Uh, if you use your power field while your gun is empowered, um, or overloaded, if you will, um, any enemy or any ally that gets the buff will also have unlimited energy. Uh, if you use your Sin Scrambler, it'll last longer. And your Teleport Beacon, if you use it um, when you're empowered, you get a uh, speed, a speed boost, like a run boost, uh, as soon as you come out the other end. So those are the basic abilities. Uh, that's the unique charge rifle. I've showed you how to combo your your ultimate and your primary ability for maximum uh, damage output. Uh, remember always to. Uh, this is a bad example. Um, but always to um, mod out all your abilities that you're currently using. Even if you're throwing a, uh, a common module in that slot, even if it's a couple levels short from where you are, um, always try to throw something in there. Uh, because as I explain on this guide right here, um, all these modules have a power rating. And power rating uh, is here at the top of your hidden stats. They don't really like to advertise that this thing is here. And your power rating is basically a modifier um, to your damage output. Uh, it controls your damage per round, so every shot that I land. Uh, now you noticed before it was uh, 322. I actually leveled up <laughs> while I was trying to build up my, uh, my HKM meter. Um, so when you level up, your power rating goes up uh, at a certain at a set amount per level uh, so just by leveling my power level went up so my damage per round also went up um, and it also uh, affects your melee damage um, which is important um, especially for a sniper uh, even if you don't have the ability uh, uh, perk that I'm going to mention because when you're in close range and you've got a lot of things swarming you use your melee attack um, it'll attack anything in front of you in a small uh, arc, if you will, and 
anything, uh, it'll take, it'll do pretty good damage. I mean, my melee attack does like 19, 1900 damage right now. Um, so that's better than taking a rapid fire shot, which only going to do 900 damage or so. And I could hit more than one enemy by doing it. So don't be afraid to use your melee attack. If you've got, uh, you know, a substantial uh, health pad, don't be swinging if you've got uh, one or two hits left before you're dead. Um, so having said that, let's roll into the perks. Okay, so here we have the perk screen. Uh, right now I'm level 20, so I only have uh, four slots, uh, four points. Uh, for the basic perks, uh, some of the, uh, the ones you want to look at, uh, you can either focus on movement abilities, uh, uh, movement perks, or a mix of damage and uh, mobility perks. A lot of the higher end players tend to uh, appreciate the movement perks a little bit more. Uh, because that's where most of the PvP is taking place. And the better, the faster you can move, the harder you are to hit, etc, etc. Uh, looking at the movement perks quick. Uh, sprinter, 5% sprint speed. Uh, prototype pistons, uh, increases your base movement speed by half a meter per second. And uh, quick flexing servos, uh, jump, uh, it's useless. Uh, where is the other one here? Uh, get a move on. Uh, this is a Dreadnought level 10 unlocked perk. Uh, increases your run speed by 10% when a weapon is holstered. Um, you may think that's just when you're sprinting, but obviously your weapon's not holstered, it's still sitting out. Um, you actually have to, it's, it's not bound by default, you have to go into key bindings, combat, uh, holster weapon. I bound this to a 2 key because it's right above my W. Uh, so if I'm running, it's easy for me to hit that so I can get a head start. Um, but you can bind it to, obviously, anything you want to bind it to. Serato. Um, so you can just holster your weapon, and your run speed uh, increases. As you can see. Um, that's also helpful inside a tornado. Uh, if you are running ahead, you can usually get and pick up the ore off the ground before your... Uh, quote unquote teammates can. Um, so, those are the uh, three of the basic movement perks uh, for the basic level. Um, the damage perks, uh, actually, this perk right here, I would suggest that every recon, no matter which class or which uh, frame you're in, either the, the Accord Recon, the Nighthawk, or the Raptor, uh, that you pick up this one first. Um, it grants healing, um, a regenerative burst, about 10% of your max health after a kill or an assist, uh, which is awesome. Um, there's no real cooldown for this, um, so as long as you're killing stuff, you're getting healed. Um, and if you're leveling, this uh, re re <laughs> keeping your health pool up is, uh, is important, obviously, because uh, especially if you're soloing, no one's going to pick you up. So I highly su highly suggest this perk. Um, Headhunter, uh, Accord Recon level 10 unlock. Uh, headshot damage by 10%. Any sniper um, can appreciate this uh, ability since you have the precision weapons. 10% uh, damage. Um, so if I'm doing 3k damage, that's an extra 300 damage on top of that if I'm hitting headshots. Ballistics Expert. Uh, increases your bullet damage by 5%. Why wouldn't you pick this up? Uh, obviously, unless you've got better things lower down the, uh, the line, but as if you're leveling and you don't have much uh, access to higher level perks, this is an excellent one to take. Flat 5% damage. Um, so here's uh, the, the Raptor uh, unique um, perk here. It's exclusive to the Raptor. Um, each hit of the charge rifle grants a stack of conduit. Upon reaching three stacks, the next shot fired or ability activated becomes empowered, uh, gaining additional effects, uh, consuming all stacks. So this is how I was getting the overload on my charge rifle before and getting the, uh, the AoE uh, bubble effect was from this perk here. So you need to hit three shots, not consecutive, 
uh, just uh, three shots whenever, and you gain the, um, the the conduit buff, if you will, basically giving you an, a free empowered ability or shot. Um, the the benefit to this is uh, it gives you AOE damage for one uh, every third shot, if you will. The downside of this, as I described before, if you're a person that plays in first person, there's no way to tell if you have this buff or not, um, because there's there's nothing that signifies the buff uh, on the default scope. Uh, there's no light that flashes. There's no sound. Um, to tell you that uh, you have the buff and that your next shot will be empowered. Or you might want to stop shooting and use an ability uh, that's because you're empowered. So what it boils down to is every third shot, if you're ready for it or not, you're going to get an extra AoE splash. Which is it's nice. It's going to do half a full round of damage uh, AoE splash regardless. So it's a good perk. Um, it's an exclusive perk. So why not go ahead and grab it? All right. So we've got movement perks. We've got some of the damage perks. Um, cover for basic. Um, some of the other things you want to might look at in the intermediate section. Uh, physicist right here. This is an excellent skill for your raptor. This is an excellent skill for any weapon that has a charge. Uh, so you're looking at the charge up speed for dreadnoughts, uh, spin up speed if you will. Um, and uh, let's say the secondary fire on a tiger, tiger claw um, that'll charge up faster so you'll be able to shoot um, giant um, Dragon Ball Z shots all over the place quicker. But specifically for the Raptor, uh, increases your charging speed by 10%, so decreases the amount of charge time by 10%. Flat. So if you're a rapid fire person, you're definitely going to get a boost of uh, DPS from this ability. Uh, plasma Enthusiast, where are we? Right here. It's unlocked uh, a Court Assault, level 20. Um, this gun uh, is considered an energy weapon. Um, so energy and plasma weapons deal 10% additional damage. Flat 10% 10, 10 damage uh, bonus. Great uh, utilization uh, for these skill points here. Uh, here's another movement perk that uh, you may decide to go for. Uh, basically it's a combination of the two previous ones. Increases run speed um, and sprint speed 5%. You need to tag claw level 20 to unlock that. And finally, bio blending increases damage dealt while at full health by 10%. Now, this one synergizes very well with your regenerative plating. If you're killing stuff, you're going to be topped off at health. If you're topped off at health, you're doing more damage. Good synergy there. Now, we're, while we're talking about synergy, we'll look at this perk right here, Plasma Enthusiast, energy and plasma weapons deal 10% additional damage. One of the better advanced um, perks that you get uh, when you level your Raptor up to level 30 is energy shaping. Uh, early in this guide I was talking about the cosmetics of this frame and they've got the, uh, the blades hanging off your elbows there. This basically turns those into actual weapons. Um, it changes your melee attack into a sin blade. Sin blade extends your melee range, so you can hit stuff out further than where you were uh, originally. Um, increases melee damage by 50%, uh, and changes the melee attack into energy damage. So not only do you get 50% melee attack damage, since it is considered an energy weapon, you also do 10% extra, extra damage there as well. So basically you get 60% extra damage from your melee attacks and increased range. Anything that's in close, you might not want to bother shooting from the hip. Just take them out with your, uh, your Sin Blade. A lot of people enjoy this perk, um, and it looks pretty cool too. Um, another option uh, is Kill Sealer. 
increases damage against critical targets. So if they're below half health, uh, you do an increased 30% damage. To get that, you have to unlock uh, a Rhino and uh, get him to level 30. Uh, as far as master level perks, uh, these are fully uh, fleshed out frames to get one of these perks. Um, Hunter, uh, from a level 40 uh, Tiger Claw. Repeatedly striking the same target increases damage 10% per hit. So after four shots landing, you're doing 40% extra damage. With this, um, with this frame, the, the speed at which you can throw out damage um, and get shots on target, this is an excellent perk. Um, so with a very small ramp up time, you're going to be doing 40% extra damage to your target. Um, arcing bolts is another option. Um, basically, it does what your uh, um, HKM does. Uh, it um, it arcs damage uh, like lightning off your targets uh, that you hit uh, and does 10% of weapon damage. So, in an AOE situation, you may already have uh, your splashes from conduit, but this will make every shot uh, basically AOE uh, arc out to a lesser extent. So those are some perks to look for, um, and uh, that'll give you an idea of how you might want to go ahead and uh, flesh out your skill trees. Um, so this has been the Raptor. Um, my other guides, I've got most of the other tier 2 classes uh, guides done. Uh, you can click the link up here and check out my other guides. Uh, all I have left is working on the, uh, the Dreadnoughts uh, guides. Uh, so those will be coming out in the next couple weeks. Uh, the next class I'm working on currently is the Arsenal. Um, so hopefully I'll get that up within a week. Um, and after that, uh, I'll be doing, obviously, the, uh, the Mammoth and Rhino. So please uh, like, uh, subscribe, comment down below. Um, any questions you might have, um, also uh, in the comment section, you can s I'll put my information for Twitch. I usually broadcast every night around 10 o'clock. Uh, I play a variety of games. I've been featuring Firefall recently, though. Uh, so feel free to come in, stop in, um, follow, um, and I'd love to see you there. Um, thank you for watching.